morning everybody what are we doing today we're doing some farming today that's what we're doing so today i gotta go do something that that pretty much hurts my soul which is i gotta go rip up a hay field that i planted this spring um completely tear it up and then uh, we're gonna replant uh, this fall basically the droughty year that we've had uh all that came up was weeds. There's a little bit of alfalfa that's mixed in there. Uh, we also planted it, I think, uh, was a little bit too wet uh, when we actually planted it. And uh, I think that kind of stalled it a little bit. And then we really did have moisture at the wrong time of year this year. And it just wasn't a great year for hay, to be honest. Any of these new plantings that we did just didn't really turn out. So. We've been working for the last week or so doing some demos on some tillage equipment. Um, we've really been trying out uh, a lot of vertical tillage and we'll look at some of the stuff that we did and uh, some of the ways that we're going with trying different stuff right now. Um, so if you look over here behind me, you'll see that there's a, a Kong skilled 9200. Big shout out to uh, Days Equipment Center down in Tilsonburg and my unbelievably awesome sales guy, Trevor who brought this out to me last week. We tried it on some sandy ground. We tried it on some clay ground. Um, and I don't think I'm gonna try it out too much more. Um, I think it's an awesome piece of machinery, but um, the biggest problem that we're having is, is the finish on the field is, is creating some waves. I think it has its applications. I just don't know if it has its applications with, uh, with what we're trying to do with uh, particular usages on ground and stuff like that. So then we had, uh, GJ's equipment out of Burgessville came down with some Lemkin products and uh, those were interesting. Some of them did a good job, some of them didn't do a good job. We, um, not that they don't do a good job, it's just that basically with the applications that we were putting it into and, and the particular conditions that we were in, um, some of them worked really well but it's a matter of there's always a budget, right? You can't buy everything for everything that you want. So we have uh, over here we have uh, the Rubin 10, which is just an amazing piece of equipment. I think they really have improved on their their equipment from the from the Rubin 9. And uh, the discs on this now are split, so you don't get like kind of trailing sway um, if things aren't set up completely right. It is definitely a fall tillage piece of equipment, though. We did do it on uh, some hard clay ground down in uh, Cayuga, and it did do a great job of ripping out wheat stubble. It didn't make clumps that were too big. And uh, it actually gave us not a bad finish on some of it as well. But I think as a spring tool, it's, it's not quite what we're looking for. It is an amazing tool though. They are uh, top notch. Uh, the general consensus out there is this is one of the best machines on the market. We also had uh, Chad from GJ's bring down uh, a power harrow, um, which one pass with this thing and then a power harrow did exactly what we wanted to do. And we also had him bring down, it's kind of a cross between a chisel plow and a cultivator, which is called a crack and that did an unbelievable job on, on filling in ditches that, uh, that had washouts in them in the, in the wheat fields. And uh, ju just an amazing tool, but probably not what I'm particularly looking for, but it was really cool to try it and see what it would do. Today we're gonna go out here with the, uh, the, the Heliodor, which is another Lemkin product. And uh, I was using this a bit yesterday to rip up uh, some some really weedy ground that we didn't get planted this spring because it was way too wet in that area and it needs to be drained. And then uh, it, it did a good job. I did about four passes on it, probably needs about two more passes today. Uh, in the wheat ground, this thing here, three passes, it was finished, it was leveled out, it was ready to plant. So we're gonna see what this is gonna do on ripping up some hay ground from spring planting. Um, I did a little bit of it yesterday. The ground is still a bit loose, um, so it did tear it up quite nice and it did level it out. I'm, I'm gonna guess that we're gonna need about uh, three passes on getting the hay ground uh, taken care of and getting ripped up and then hopefully if it doesn't rain today they are calling for 60% rain this afternoon hopefully if it doesn't rain we can get in there with the planter and we can replant that hay today if not we'll do it later this week not a big deal but I want to see what this thing is going to do on that on that hay ground that, uh, that that was worked this spring planted came up as weeds we're going to rip it up again it's an expensive uh, experiment, unfortunately, but hey, that's farming. What do you do?
hay field that I planted this spring. We tried out, well, I tried out some new planting techniques with some, uh, with some dim different equipment than what we would normally use. And uh, it didn't work. Plain and simple, it, it did not work. I think what ended up happening was most of the hay seed got buried a little bit too deep in the ground. And what happened was the weeds came up a lot faster than what the hay seed did. Uh, we are getting some hay seed uh, coming up now. Some alfalfa is showing. Um, and then on top of that, we had a drought year and the hay did not get moisture when the hay needed. Most people's hay this year is not great. Um, and so for new planting, it, it, was, it was a definite struggle. It was very dry. And what we ended up with here is we ended up with a hay field that, that looks like this. So if you can tell here, this is all, um, I believe, I'm not a weed guy, but I believe this is a lamb's quarter that uh, is very dominant in this field. And uh, if we look down here in the actual hay field, uh, if I get out of the way of the shadow here, we can definitely see that there is a catch of alfalfa that is coming up amongst uh, all the lamb's quarter and the wild carrot and the other weeds that are here. But then the other issue that we have with what, uh, what I used to plant this field was, is it left a really, really rough finish on the field. It looked great when we pulled out, but after the dirt actually settled down, we have this real wavy, ridgy pattern. Um, from from the tool that we use to to plant the field with um, I was very excited But whatever if you don't try you don't know and uh, you have to try so we planted I think there's about 36 or 39 acres here. I can't remember exactly offhand how many acres it is uh, But I believe it's it's either 36 or 39 anyway So we planted it all this spring and, and it did not turn out we we clipped off the weeds the the first round and usually if you clip those weeds off um, and the, if the weeds did take over, the hay will come back up underneath and, and overpower the, the second, second wave of weeds. Didn't happen this year. Whether it was a drought, whether the seed was too, too, uh, too sh or not shallow enough in the ground, it was too deep, uh, I don't know, I don't know. But anyways, that is what happened. So we are going to use this right here in order to pull that hay field that we or weed field i guess you could call it out of the ground so as you can see all this bare dirt over here and you can see the uh the planter over there all fixed up and uh working in the background we are going to uh to do to that field over there what we just finished doing to this field over here so this is an amazing tool this is um the lemkin heliodor it uh it pulled all that weeds that this field here that we're looking at with bare dirt looked exactly like that field over there um, three passes ago so we went over this thing in three passes it left a, a very smooth uh, finish and it left the dirt looking like this and the tractor and the planter are out there uh, packing that down and putting hay seed down and hopefully we'll have an actu actual good uh, catch of uh, hay next spring um, so be it didn't work this year very expensive uh experiment to find out so uh big shout out here uh just because uh they did lend this to us on a demo uh, uh chad there over at gj's equipment down in burgessville uh, let us work this ground up and we also did some other ground work with this thing uh, i have a strong feeling that most likely i will have one of these things in my yard next year
We just went one pass on this field with this uh, Lemkin Heliodor and I'm going to get out of the tractor now and just kind of show you what the dirt looks like uh, that was just full of weeds and a little bit of alfalfa maybe about 10 minutes ago. I'm going to get out of the tractor and we'll just have a quick look at what one pass with this tool uh, can accomplish here. As you can see, I got my uh, CSA approved uh, safety sandals on. Anyway, so this is uh, this is one pass. We got a, a lot of trash here uh, laying up on top, but it's definitely uh, cut off. Uh, the ground's fairly worked up. Uh, it is definitely rough to drive over still at this point, but uh, usually by second pass, things get smoothed out pretty good. And uh, a lot of this trash will get uh, buried a lot better than what you're seeing right now. And uh, by third pass, it'll pretty much be plantable. So we'll, uh, we'll come back out of the tractor in uh, another 15 or 20 minutes here and show what second pass looks like. So the ground is still fairly loose and uh, you 
know, it, it, it doesn't quite work up as fast if it was, say, like a, out of a no-till field or, or something like that. But we did pull some wheat stubble out of a no-till uh, wheat field um, last week, and it did do an excellent job of, uh, of doing that with three passes and most of the field four in some spots. When I went on my way down the field, I kind of went over an area that I had already done on second pass and uh, it's amazing the difference between first pass and second pass and how smooth this thing can level it out by the second pass. So we're going to get out of the tractor again and look at the uh, field a bit and see how much uh, that trash was incorporated uh, from first pass to second pass. Just to give you an idea, um, if you're curious, if not, whatever, uh, skip forward in the video. Alright, let's get out of the tractor again here. And you can see here from up at the top of the stairs of the tractor, there's still a, still a bit of trash on the field, but it's nothing compared to where it was after first pass. And there's even areas of the field where the trash is, is pretty much gone. Like if we look over here, you can almost see no weed trash whatsoever in the field. So again, it, uh, it impresses the heck out of me that you know two passes with a with a disc and uh, the the field's pretty much leveled out and uh, the trash is pretty much buried I'm gonna go over the field one more time just to uh, finish smoothing it out chop up the rest of this uh, weed trash that's here and uh, finish off from there uh, I'm I'm rather impressed with this uh, with this piece of equipment and uh, we're all folded up and I'm gonna head over to another field where we just had to do a little bit of fixing uh, from the spring planting. There was some ruts and some mud holes and a little bit of edging's been done. We're gonna do that. But anyways, in the grand scheme of things, I'm happy with what was done there. This was a costly lesson to, uh, to have to work this up uh, a second time and replant it, but I think it's probably a, a less expensive lesson than waiting till next year to find out that it's a complete failure. I don't do a lot of this uh, replanting side of things, but uh, with the year that we had, with some of the mistakes that I made this year, so be it, lesson learned, uh, move forward, go on to the next year, and things will be good. So um, we got our fixed, that's what counts. Okay, 
you'll hear me talk about this a lot when I'm out doing hay and stuff like that, but one of my absolute favorite things about working ground, doing hay, things like that is the wildlife that I get to see. We had coyotes out in the field the other day, we get foxes, we get eagles, we get uh, um, vultures, we get red-tailed hawks all the time, but today I'm going to show you one of the coolest things that we got going on. There is a male American bald eagle standing in the field right next to me eating something that I probably ran over with the discs. So I'm going to open the door and hopefully it doesn't take off and hopefully I can get in close enough that you can uh, you can see him here. Oh, he just flew up. As soon as I open up the door to the tractor, he flew off. You can see him flying away in the, in the distance there. But there, yeah, there's an American bald eagle right there up in the tree. I hope you guys got a chance to see him.